Hey y'all, so we're getting the uh, tire care punged up, wrapped together, so we can be off to Platinum Powder Coat in the morning here in Colorado Springs. They're going to do it a matte black, and we'll just, uh, they said about a two week turnaround. So this video is going to be extended over two weeks. Hey y'all, so in part one I showed you the install, the test fitment, uh, the issues I ran into getting this tire carrier squared away. The paint got damaged and I just don't have the energy to sand it all, strip it all, so we're going to take it to powder coat. Um, Platinum Powder Coat in Colorado Springs is going to sandblast it clean and fresh for me and then we're going to do it a matte black. Um, they're going to have it for about two weeks. So the intro of this video is going to be two weeks older than the rest of the video. Uh, the rest of part two is going to be me installing the final product, getting it on. Um, I will have to show you in this video how strong those struts are without the tire carrier. Uh, it took a lot of my body weight to get it to shut, but uh, it looks like they'll hold up nicely to the weight of the tire and the carrier. Um, I'm not going crazy on tire size. I'm running a 331250 R15 on a 15 by 10 inch wheel, uh, steel wheel, and it's got, I think, 3.75 inch backspace. But when you measure for the mount on the tire carrier, you have to measure from the sidewall to the inside flange to the wheel. I'll show you guys how to do that in this video as well. That way, when Bash asks, asks for the measurement of backspace, you guys have that. So, let me get this dropped off, and we'll catch up in two weeks. Well, I got word that the tire carrier got done a um, hell of a lot earlier than we were planning. Almost a week and a half earlier. So, it's getting picked up today. We're going to do the final install tonight, but I wanted to show you guys um, the struts that come with this HK off-road kit. Uh, these things are pure beef. It literally takes all the body weight I have to close them. So, I'm going to go hop back there and show you guys that. I wanted to show you guys how heavy these struts are. I'm going to just get in here. So I'm 210 pounds, 5 foot 10. I'm going to show you guys how hard it is to close this hatch with no tire carrier on it. I should show you guys how plenty strong this thing is. I mean, this hole's pulling me up. These things are just pure beef, like. When we go to put the tire carrier in tonight, I'm going to have to take these struts back off just to get it down. So, oh, and something I didn't show you guys is here, I had to widen these out from half inch to 11 sixteenths to clear the welds on that uh, tire carrier. So, we'll get to the install once I get to home after work, and that'll be part of this video. So here is the freshly powder coated tire carrier. Powder coat turned out ten times better than my paint job. Here we have the four nuts that hold it in at the top. All eight bolts. I just um and then I'm debating on chrome spine lugs or just going with the black lug nuts. So big shout out to Platinum Powder Coat. These guys did outstanding work. Highly recommend them if you're in the Colorado Springs area looking for powder coat. Almost looks too good to go on the Jeep now. So, I'm going to take the, oh, and these are not scratches, you guys, they're just things in the metal. From shipping and whatnot. So, I'm going to load this up in the Jeep tonight, wrap it up, keep it safe, along with the spare tire, and probably put this in on my lunch break tomorrow, and I'll record that for you guys. Uh, like I said, this video is going to be choppy, because I'm doing this as I get time. So I'm going to start by laying out all my parts, make sure we have everything we need, hardware, tire carriers over here. Then the next thing I'm going to do is feed this bracket up top here, right here. You can see these holes are huge. 
They're supposed to only be half inch, but the way he welded it, I had to hog them out so the weld sit down in the hole. Well, after I get that part fed in, we want to disconnect these struts. There's just way too much tension on this hatch while trying to do this by myself. I have a 2x4 on hand to help hold the hatch where I need it, and I would recommend the same if, unless you've got another person to help you. So let me get this fed in, we'll get these disconnected, and we'll go from there. Alright, so it's kind of hard to film and do this, but I'm going to show you bits and pieces as we go. You want to slide it in from here and use caution. If you paint it, it's going to scratch. If you use powder coat, it should be durable enough to take some sliding. It is a Jeep after all. So let me get the slit in place. What you guys get a gist is it's going to slide from the hinge side and line up with those four holes. So to save your powder coat and on final install, just get all the electrical out of the way. It makes your life so much easier. I fought this for about 20 minutes before I could even get it in there. So I'm going to leave these loose because i still got to put Loctite on them. And then we're going to transition to this side and you guys can see the holes in here. And get all the braces in and go from there. So I have the hatch open. As you can see i got all the brackets in. Bolts are dropped in. There's no nuts on the inside. If we come down here, you all can see they're just sitting in there. I want to get all that lined up and mocked up. Then I can get the inner brackets in. Now my goal is to get the bracket in and then put a nut on it and leave it loose because we still have a Loctite all these. So let me see about fishing this in here and I'll get back to y'all. So you can see I got the bracket on the first bolt. Got a nut just hand just hand started and it's holding the bracket in place. Now I'll line up the other two bolts and do the same thing because there's three. I thought there'd be four holding in but it's only three. It's kind of hard to get in here y'all. So, let me get this lined up and I'll show you. So here is the passenger side done. This brace runs three bolts long instead of all four. And looking at it, all the weight is centered right here in the middle anyways. So we'll be good. Bash did a really good job designing this thing. We had a couple hiccups with fitment, but that's with any vehicle. You do custom parts, you gotta adapt things. So. Let me get the other side in, we'll get these top bolts tightened up, get all the electronics put back, and we'll show you guys where, how it looks. Well y'all, I got the tire carrier installed, not exactly happy. It was looking like it was going smooth until I went to put the struts on. Struts seemed about an inch too short, or too long I mean. So, and that being said, I pushed the hatch up, not realizing it was binding on the roof, and I'll show you guys what happened. We got steel shots of this, but here. Now, mind you, the, it still opens flawlessly, doesn't have any more problems, but this part here, to get the strut on, was shoving into my roof. So, Bash, I already messaged him, he said he's going to make some relocation brackets for the ball studs. Now we just gotta figure out what we're doing with the roof. Because technically I think it still opens, it just has a dent in it now. Let me pause uh, for a second, let me get this, see if I can get this open because I can't do it one handed. Even with the hatch open, it is still hitting the roof. Just gonna make it worse, I guess my hatch is stuck closed now. Well, you guys, this concludes part two of my tire carrier dilemmas and installs. You know, I thought, sorry you guys, I'm break from work and my walkie is on. I uh, thought we were in the clear. Everything seemed to be fitting good and the head struts are about an inch long, inch and a half and drove my tire carrier into the roof, destroying my roof, destroying my powder coat. Uh, Bash said he's going to make some stuttery location brackets, but I am just defeated. I'm busted. I'm just, I don't know what to think about this. This is just sickening. $600 on a tire carrier, $100 to have a fab shop doctorate, another $125 to have beautiful powder coat put down, and 
Nothing but drama. Nothing but dilemma. Let's see, today set me back $125 that I spent on powder goat because it got destroyed in a heartbeat. Not to mention the cost of fixing my roof, which I have no idea. Um, I assume I could just uh, pry it out or something, but I don't want to damage it any worse. Well, thanks for watching, y'all. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll keep y'all updated with what happens. God bless.